Prada Beauty is launching at Sephora. We have major, major spring collections that have launched from Chanel, Dior, and Tom Ford, and my friends, why I am not buying the new Natasha Denona palette. Let's get into it. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well, and welcome back to our fortnightly episode of Pass or Yes. This is when we talk about what is new in luxury beauty, and I'll let you guys know, is it gonna be a pass or is it going to be a yes? Basically, we chill out and we talk about new product releases and news in the realm of luxury beauty. So if you wanna hang out with me today and talk about some new juicy spring makeup and some beauty news, then keep watching. All right, party people, let's kick things off with a little bit of beauty news. This is the thing that I'm the most excited about in this episode, and that is Prada Beauty is launching at Sephora, yes! And in fact, by the time this video goes live, it might have already launched. I'm very excited about this launch because if you guys missed my best makeup of 2023 videos, all of the products that I reviewed from Prada Beauty made it into that best of list. However, it's made me a little sad, okay? Because I don't hear that many other people talking about this brand. And I think a big reason for that is because it's just a little bit hard to get, or at least it has been up until now. If you live in the US, like me, you either have to order it off the Prada website or from Harrods or from Selfridges, which are UK retailers. You got to pay for shipping. And so it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of a commitment because the prices are very high. So I'm very excited that we're going to be seeing this at a big mainstream retailer here in the United States. And hopefully we'll see it at Sephora Canada and maybe also throughout Europe and other countries as well. I was reading some comments about this. I think a lot of people were excited about it. Some people were a little surprised. Some people were wondering, you know, are they going to be going to Ulta? I'm not really sure, friends, but I do think it makes a lot of sense for Sephora to be bringing in Prada Beauty because they are kind of getting some of their market share taken away by Ulta, who has been launching brands like Chanel, Dior, Charlotte Tilbury, Fenty even in their stores. So they are kind of expanding into the luxury category. And Sephora needs to catch up. They need to catch up, okay, with some of the hot new brands. It's becoming less and less of a default retail for a lot of people, at least that's the feedback that I'm getting. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Where do you like to shop? Sephora, Ulta, Nordstrom, some other retailer. Let me know. What do you think of Sephora right now? I still see a lot of people shopping at Sephora, so I'm excited that they're going to be having Prada Beauty. I noticed a lot of people were also commenting about the prices of the products. It's a luxury brand. Prada has consistently been in one of the top three slots of biggest luxury brand in the world in 2020. So it makes a lot of sense that they're going to be coming out with a beauty brand. And it also makes a lot of sense that the prices are going to be higher. The prices that are on the Sephora website seem about right. When you take a look at the pricing for Chanel, Tom Ford, Dior, a lot of these other very high end brands. And I will say, guys, I will say, I think Prada really nailed it, not only with the formulas, but also the packaging. The packaging is a lot nicer than what we see from Tom Ford and Chanel. Just going to say it right there. So overall, guys, I really, really like this brand. I will link down below where you can shop the collection. And also I will put my review of the products so you can figure out if there's anything that you want to pick up if you are a Sephora shopper. By the way, if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I love luxury beauty. I upload new videos just like this one every single week covering what is hot in luxury beauty, but also lots of new makeup reviews. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. We would love to have you here on this channel. And as a reminder, friends, all the products that I mentioned in today, they're all going to be linked down below in case you guys want to shop. Let's get back to the rest of these new releases. As I teased in the beginning of this video, there are so many spring collections that have just dropped from some of our favorite luxury brands. It's always like the first of the month. Everything starts to drop except with January. It's usually, you know, January 2nd because everybody's like tired and hungover and whatnot on New Year's Day, or at least sometimes I am. So what do we have new from our favorite luxury brands? Well, Chanel, Finally, guys, has officially launched their Chanel Le Beige Winter Glow Collection. I already reviewed this collection for you guys. It's really, really beautiful. Check out that review if you're kind of trying to figure out what products to get. We saw this drop on Nordstrom, but the products kept kind of like selling out. I don't really think it was supposed to launch, guys. Some of you guys picked it up from the boutique, but for those of you who were trying to get your hands on it, it is officially launched. So I will have that link down below. There's an eyeshadow palette in the shade 
cool. I have some comparisons with the other Le Beige eyeshadow palettes in my review. There are some beautiful lip balms, some gorgeous blushes, and also some nail polishes as well. Everything is kind of like that, you know, frosty, blushing, cold girl type of vibe. But I think these colors can really carry us into spring. Nothing super groundbreaking, but the formulas are very gorgeous. Everything has something that's like a little bit special to it. Also, I forgot to mention there is a limited edition primer that is very, very nice. It's not going to be around for long. So if you're interested in that, that would probably be the biggest thing that I would recommend picking up sooner rather than later. Also, friends, we have a ton, a ton of new products that just dropped for spring from Dior. It's always the first of the month. These brands are like, here you go. Spend all your money. Here's all the new product launches. I know it's very hard to decide. So I did pick up quite a few things to review for you guys. Let me walk you through it because some of these are limited edition and some of these I'm pretty sure are permanent. So first up, we have two eyeshadow quints. These are called Pink Organza and Popple and Peach. So Pink Organza is kind of like the cool tone, neutral pinky one and Popple and Peach is, well, the warm tone peach one. They look really cute for spring. I'm curious if these are gonna beat the Popolin and Organza quints from two springs ago. Those were so popular, they literally flew off the shelves. So I'm curious to see how long these stay in stock. I tried to talk you guys out of these when I talked about them in my previous episode because I thought that they looked a little bit dusty, but I did pick them up for review purposes. So look out for that review, guys. I will be doing kind of like a wrap up of Dior Spring. I probably would wait for the review though. Like I probably wouldn't rush and buy these friends because as we all know, Dior reformulated their eyeshadows and their blushes and their lip maximizers and their lipsticks and pretty much everything else last year. And it's not that they're bad now, it's just that they're a little bit inconsistent. Some of them are better than others. So that's why I wanna review them for you guys here on my channel. So we have those two new quints. We also have this new blush in the shade Delicate Rose. And this is another one that I would say before you rush out and buy it, I would take a look at what you already have in your collection because this looks very similar to, was it Precious Rose? Everything's a rose. It's like Precious Rose and Splendid Rose were the holiday blushes. And then now we have, what is it called? Delicate Rose. See, I can't even keep track of them, guys, because they're all so similar. I did pick this one up. This was a yes, okay? I didn't pass on it. I'm getting these to review, but I would wait for the review and see if that is gonna be worth it. There's also some nail polishes. They're very cute, but those were a pass from me. And then they're also also are some new lip maximizers that I want to show you guys. These were a yes, but I didn't pick up all of them. We have Icy Blue, Shimmer Candy, Shimmer Rose Gold, and then there's also another one that I saw last night that's called Holographic Yuzu. Doesn't that one look fun? I bet it doesn't look yellow on your lips. It probably just looks, you know, like clear with a yellow sparkle, but it still looks really cool. The one that was a yes for me was the Shimmer Rose Gold. If you like Rose Gold Shimmer, you're gonna like it. It's very similar to the lip glow, the Dior lip glow in the same shade, which you guys have seen me demo here on this channel. So we have some things that were a pass, but a lot of those were a yes. Another thing that was a yes is this new eyeshadow palette. This is not a part of the other two. This is separate. I'm pretty sure this one is permanent and it does say that it is exclusive to the Dior website. This is called Mimi Rose. This one's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit more interesting than the average Dior pink palette because it does have that little frosty blue. And we also have what looks to be a really pretty purpley matte shade to deepen things up. The other three shades in the palette look very, very similar. So this was a yes. I just needed to take a look at this one. I wanted to see if it was worth it given that so many of the shades in this palette look the same but the promo photos never do these palettes justice guys i feel like the photos always look so like desaturated and washed out you can't tell the difference between the different finishes that are in this palette but i thought that it looked intriguing so i picked that up as well the blush that i suppose kind of goes along with it that i think also is going to be permanent is this beautiful light pink one. This one is called Rose Popolin. So once again, another rose, guys, but at least this one seems a little bit different than other ones that they've launched recently. It's very light. It looks very, very soft. So I think this is only going to work for those of us who are very fair. So I did pick this up. I think it'll work for my skin tone. I don't think I have anything like this light and pastel. So I thought it might be nice. So this also was a yes. As you can see, I'm picking up a lot of Dior. I really try and get as much of the Chanel Tom for Dior for you guys, especially if you're interested. This next palette 
is from the Backstage Collection. And actually, I think this is the one that the most of you are interested in, and I can see why. This is the Dior Backstage Smoky Essentials Palette. This looks like a very nice everyday neutral palette that you could, you know, create a, a smoky look with as well, because most of the shades in here are pretty light, everyday and wearable, even though it's called Smoky Essentials. I also like the fact that there's a white and a black in there. Thank you, Dior. I love those options. And because it's the backstage line, you get more shades. So it's like, okay, if you put a black in there, you still get eight other shades that you can work with, even if you don't really use that one every day. This is a yes, I picked it up. I think it's arriving today or tomorrow, so I will be reviewing that as well. I don't know if this is limited edition, it just says new on the Dior website. Will this be coming to Sephora and Ulta? I think it probably will. I think it definitely will come to Sephora because we saw that with their other, you know, limited edition holiday backstage palettes. So if you like shopping from those retailers, you might want to wait a little bit and make sure friends that you are following me on Instagram because that is where I let you know when all these new things drop. As soon as I see it or if I see it come at Ulta, I will post that out. Definitely give me a follow or DM me over there. But wait, there's more. I'm telling you guys, there's so many new things from Dior. And the next thing might upset some people it is another reformulation i know if you miss it if you're behind on this let me catch you up now dior really wants to be seen as a clean beauty brand whatever that means to them that's what they want to be seen as and so what they've been doing is they've been reformulating a lot of their products over the past year or two so that they are clean and once again there's not really a standard definition for that but for most of the products you know it means taking out certain preservatives taking out talc that was a big one for the blushes and the eyeshadows and now they have reformulated the rouge dior lipsticks i'm very interested to see what the new formula is like i have a feeling that it probably will be good and so this was a yes i think i picked up three of the matte shades and one of the satin shades the matte is called velvet by the way so three velvet and one satin let me tell you friends there's 68 shades 68 shades it took me a good long time to decide <laughs> which ones I wanted to get. I tried to get some wearable ones and like one red to show you all. So I'll also be reviewing this alongside, alongside the new lip liners. I love a good lip liner, okay? So this was a no brainer for me. I go through lip liners so quickly. So this was also a yes. Woo, that was a lot. That's all that we have from Dior. Most of it was a yes, guys. And like I said earlier, I encourage you to watch the reviews. Watch the reviews. I'm going to be trying to get them up as quickly as I can. A lot of these products like the lipsticks and the lip liners, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be around and they are going to be launching at other retailers. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel and follow me on Instagram to know when those are going to launch elsewhere. All right, friends, next up, we have something new coming from Chantecaille for spring 2024. This is their Sea Turtle collection. So we have two eyeshadow trios, one in cool and one in warm for $78, very expensive. And then we also have a collection of lip cheeks, which are $54 each in petal pink, plum nude, warm coral, and fresh peach. Comment down below if those are repeat shades. I'm not as familiar with the Chantecai lip sheets when it comes to the shades, but I know a lot of you guys are. So let us know if any of those are repeats that we should be paying attention to. Is this a pass or is this a yes? I think this in general would probably be a pass. And I hate to say that. I hate to say that for a lot of Chantecaille collections, but this still looks like a bit of a snooze fest. I think the item to buy from this collection is definitely one of the lip cheeks because overall the packaging is just adorable. I love the little turtle. I love the fun colors. I specifically like just the mixtures of like the greens with the pinks and the, the blues and the corals and the golds. It's just like a fun, coral reef type of thing but what is bothering me the most are the color stories of the eyeshadows they just look very uninspired i do like the look of the warm one and i say warm in quotes because it doesn't look warm at all there's like an olive a soft peach and like a soft champagne. I do think that these eyeshadows are going to suit those of us out there that like kind of a sheer wash of color. So I'm kind of on the fence about this collection. I think that the packaging is cute and tasteful. I think that the colors are elegant, but I do still think it's a little bit boring. I think that the eyeshadows could have been a little bit more reflective of the theme. Do you think that these are on theme?
theme, guys, I would have loved to have seen sandy beach colors with a pop of coral or maybe a pop of blue or something in here. It's just kind of a snooze fest. So in general, I think that this collection is a pass, but I am thinking of revealing it because just like NARS, guys, I kind of am always writing off a lot of these Shantikai collections. I don't review them, but a lot of you guys are interested in them. So comment down below. Let me know. Are you interested in me reviewing this? I am considering getting the warm palette and probably one of the lip sheets because like I said it's a cute collection hopefully I can help you guys figure out if this is going to be worth the money and that is what this channel is all about so I'm probably going to pick up something from this collection but if I were you I would wait for a review I would wait for a review and see if these are going to be like anything special and if you think the colors are going to suit you. Another little piece of beauty news that popped up in my inbox recently is from Victoria Beckham Beauty. I love this brand. You guys know I talk about a lot of their products here on my channel, but unfortunately they did announce friends that they are going to be doing a small price increase in the new year. And correct me if I'm wrong guys in the comments section, but I think that they did this last year as well. I don't think it's going to be very drastic. I think it's probably going to be, you know, one to three dollars depending on the product. And it's just another example about how everything is going up in price. We just can't escape it. What do I think about it? You know, I think it's unfortunate, but I do kind of appreciate that Victoria Beckham Beauty or their team at least is telling their customers, hey, listen, we have to increase the prices. We don't want this to be a surprise. We don't want to be shady about it. And they also had a 15% off sale until the end of the year in case people wanted to pick things up at even a little bit of a discount at the prices that they were before the price increase. A lot of brands have done this, guys, over the past two years, a lot of them, and they don't announce anything. I've seen all of the Dior palettes go up in price. I've seen Natasha Denona go up in price. I've seen a lot of brands just kind of bump up their prices across the board like two three maybe even five dollars and those of us who shop beauty a lot we definitely definitely notice it it is a shame but i do kind of appreciate that they at least announced it so that their true fans could go out there and maybe pick up something that they've been wanting to get if they didn't already get a chance to get it around the black friday sale season so just wanted to talk about this as kind of like a general theme that i'm seeing in the industry guys and please comment down below let me know your thoughts what do you think about all of this are you going to more you know drug store brands now? Are you looking for more value? Are you looking for better packaging from a lot of these brands? I definitely am. What I like about Victoria Beckham Beauty is that the packaging and the formula is usually pretty impeccable. So at least I'm getting a pretty good value for my money in, you know, like it checks all the boxes. That's kind of what I'm saying here, guys. So I would love to hear all of your thoughts. Let's start a little discussion in the comment section down below. Switching gears here, friends, we're going back to new product releases and we have some new products that have launched from NARS Cosmetics. And most notably, we have this new eyeshadow palette. This is the NARS Afterglow Irresistible Eyeshadow Palette. And it looks very, very similar to basically every other palette that they just released. But I did notice that this one, it's a little bit more warm toned. If you like warm tones, I think you're going to like this palette. In fact, guys, this was a yes for me. I think normally it would be a pass, but I decided to give NARS a chance for once. A lot of people ask me to review their makeup, but I'm usually pretty hesitant because a lot of it is like same, same, but different. But I did give this palette a try, guys. I have a full review up on my channel. I didn't pick up the lipstick or the liquid blush that they launched as a part of this collection. That was a pass. I decided to focus on the palette and I actually was very pleasantly surprised. It's actually what I have on my eyes today. I did kind of like a lighter look than what I did in the review just to show you guys you know, something different that you can do with this palette. The colors are pretty basic. They are a little bit more warm tone than what we've seen before. And they do have a matte, a soft satin, and a glitter finish in this palette. And you can see all of those finishes demoed in my review, but I was pretty impressed by all of them. I think that the palette is really good quality. It really just depends on whether or not, you know, you want these shades. The packaging is really nice. So this was a yes for me, friends, and I actually do recommend it. But but if you have a lot of this stuff, I don't really think it is a must-have. 
Another product that I really don't think is a must have is this new quad from Charlotte Tilbury. Many of you all were asking me, are you going to review this? What do you think of this palette? This is the Queen of Luck Luxury Palette. Now this is limited edition and it looks like maybe that this is specifically for the Lunar New Year. We see a lot of those types of releases come out this time of year. And the past couple of years, Charlotte Tilbury has always released something. I like the fact that she's releasing a new color story because I think what she's done in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, is she just sort of takes bestsellers and then repackages them in some sort of like red compact. So I like the fact that we get something new. Everybody can enjoy this whether you celebrate Lunar New Year or you don't, but this is a pass for me. I just decided to skip this, guys. It's a limited edition. I feel like it's going to be here. Everyone talks about it. And then two weeks later, nobody's going to care about this palette. It is very neutral. It looks very wearable, but it just doesn't look like anything new or different. If you have a lot of Charlotte Tilbury palettes or even just one Charlotte Tilbury palette that's in a neutral shade, you probably don't really need this. It's just okay. I didn't watch any reviews of this, I will say, but the swatches look, I don't know, like they look a little bit sheer. They look a little bit not super great. Comment down below and let me know if you got this. Do you like it? But for me, it just seemed, you know, kind of boring, very uninspired. And I don't really see Lunar New Year in this color story. I mean, we do have one gold in here, but I thought that the colors of Lunar New Year were usually more like gold and red. I don't know, something a little bit interesting, I think would have been appreciated. I don't celebrate Lunar New Year. So comment down below. Let me know if you agree. If you do, if you're more of an expert than me. But for me, ugh, this was a pass. Gucci Beauty has launched lip glosses. We haven't seen lip glosses from them, at least I think so to date. And they come in six different shades here. And these, my friends, are a total pass. I like Gucci Beauty. I appreciate Gucci Beauty. I really like the packaging and the formulas. But this just seems kind of unnecessary. You can only have so many lip glosses before they all tend to look the same. And when I look at the swatches and application of these in the promo photos, they look very, very sheer. Like if you look at the model here or the hand with the deeper skin tone, the shades all look pretty similar. They really don't give a ton of pigment. I have no doubt that these are probably a very luxurious type of formula and, you know, texture on the lips. But for the price, it's just like not really something that I'm going to spring for. I prefer the Dior Lip Maximizers, like the one that I have on my lips today, because I feel like those, they have a really nice texture, nice packaging. I love the sparkle that they give and the plumping effect that they give as well. So I'm going to stick to my Dior Lip Maximizers. These from Gucci are a pass. Okay, now let's talk about the new stuff from Natasha Denona. We have two new little mini products. She always does this, especially at the beginning of the year, kind of leading up to Valentine's Day. We start to see all these little like mini products and specifically things in kind of like that pink color story. She has often done the love color story, which is a little bit bolder and pinker, kind of going off of the original love palette. She's done different variations of that. I don't know if she's going to do that again or if this is what she's doing for this year, but what she decided to do is to kind of go off of the My Dream midi palette that she launched last holiday. This time around, we have two little minis. We have a My Dream mini eyeshadow palette, and then we have the My Dream mini glow blush. And listen, guys, okay, because I've said this like a couple times on my social media, this is a total pass. I don't want to act like these are bad products, but what I want to say is that, you know, these are a pass because they're just incredibly unnecessary for people that have a lot of makeup or have a lot of neutral makeup. I know that they are travel friendly, but how often are you actually like traveling around with your makeup? Maybe you have a small everyday makeup bag and you bring it in your car, you take it to the gym, but you probably already have a lot of neutral mini products in there. So, I sort of urge you to pump the brakes here when you see these cute, neutral, wearable mini products that are like half the price of the full size thing. So it's like, oh, why not? You know, just throw a little mini palette in there. I urge you to pump the brakes and really take a look at what you already have in your collection. This mini eyeshadow palette, while it is very beautiful, it just seems like the kind of thing that I would buy for a friend who doesn't have any eyeshadow at all. Like this is the first palette you're gonna give someone. If I had like a teenage daughter or something, this would be a really good thing that I could buy her. That's gonna be, you know, a little bit special, better formula, but it's not really something that I'm gonna pick up. And that's why it is 
a pass. I just don't really think that it's worth it at all. And the other thing that annoys me about this palette is like, it doesn't look anything like the My Dream palette. Where are like the golden tones? Where are the purpley tones? Where are like the pretty toppers? It just looks like a neutral to slightly cool tone palette. And the My Dream palette is the warmer neutral palette. So it just doesn't make sense. Okay, it doesn't make sense, guys. And then the mini glow blush, I think that looks really cute. But remember, guys, a lot of times brands, they use things like embossings and patterns to make us feel like it's something wildly different and new. I know it's got the three colors right there, but they're all gonna blend together and they're just gonna look like the same rose blush that she has launched so many times in other minis and different like seasonal collections. So just remember, I know that looks really cool and it looks like kind of a multi-purpose product. It does look better than the eyeshadow palette, I'll give it that, but it really isn't anything different. It's just a way to sort of market to us and make us think like, ooh, that looks so cool and different. I need to try it. So yes, I'm being like super salty in this episode, guys. These look really cute and no judgment to anybody to pick them up because a lot of you did. But I just want to explain why I'm not reviewing these. They're so duplicative. They're so dupable. I just don't really think that they're worth it if you are a makeup enthusiast. All right, friends, that is all I have for this week's episode. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Now it is your turn, friends. The most important part, I need you to sound off in the comment section down below and let me know what you think of these new releases and beauty news, all of the updates that we talked about today. I need to hear what you think because your opinion matters just as much as mine. So let's start a little discussion in the comment section down below. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.